Welcome to lecture 55, properties. So in the last lecture, we started mentioning that properties are basically a C-sharp specific way of doing get and set functions. What properties offer are basically a syntax that looks like a normal variable. So how we have int x equals 5, and then you can, re you can reassign it by saying x equals 10. That's basically what a property does, but really behind the scenes, it is a function. A property gets converted at, at compile time into a function. But it allows us to basically do that syntax of using the assignment operator instead of calling a function. That's the only difference, but besides that, it really is a get and set function behind the scenes, but by using properties inside of a class, we can use a better syntax, but it's only for C Sharp. So we're going to use the same exercise from the last lecture, but we're just going to convert it into using, pro with, using it with properties. So inside of student.cs, we have the name, age, final grade, private data, like before, all the same functions. We have set, we have the get name, set name, get age, set age, get final grade, set final grade. Now we're just going to convert all these into properties. So the syntax for creating a property is almost the same syntax as creating a regular variable. Like this right here is almost a property, except it's private. And our properties are going to be public because it's a, it basically is this. If we make a property, it's going to be these two combined. And at, at compile time, it will get converted into something like this. Um, but at design time and while we're programming, we can use special syntax that makes it a little bit more easier to comprehend for people. So let's start off by making a property for name. So the first thing we do is we create a public version of the name. So basically it starts off by looking like a variable. So I'm going to say public string name, just like a normal variable, public string name. So I'm declaring a variable called name, except instead of adding parameters now, I just go right to the body. So I add a body. Once I have a body, I can now add get and set accessors to this property. So let's do the get portion first. To do that, we say get, and then we make another block for the get. So anything inside of here is now forget. So basically, we want to take this code and copy and paste it into there. So the get will do the same stuff as the get name, and now we can replace it. So now we have the get. For the set, we're going to say set, and now we can do the set code. So we'll just cut, cut that and paste it into there. However, we're running into our first problem. Because this is a property and it has no parameters, how do we get the value of what they are trying to set? Basically, what is on the right-hand side of that equal sign? Because there's no parameters, we're not getting an argument here that we can use. So what we have to do is there's a special keyword for the set called value. Value represents the value that, that they're trying to set. So if I say if value is not equal to empty, then name equals value. So value just represents whatever the value that they're trying to set. So as you can see, this is a name property now. So it represents the get and set portion of this. And it looks like a regular variable to the user. So th this is the property. This is the internal data that it's using behind the scenes. See, name is there behind the scenes. However, what, it's to the user over here. So we remove set name and get name. This is how we use it now. We do s1 dot. Now, this little wrench is the property right here. This is the wrench. However, it looks like a variable. I can just say name equals, I don't know, Bob, if I want to change his name. So now it looks like a variable. However, when you do this assignment right here, it really is behind the scenes going into here instead. Do you see how the capital N is the property? There's a public version. The private data behind the scenes is still the lowercase n, which is back there, which is still private. So we're accessing this uppercase property. And because of that, it still is going to run this get and set code. It automatically knows if, if I do this, that means I'm trying to set it because there's an equal sign. So it automatically jumps to this portion and does the checking. If in here now, if I go S1 dot name so I want to print the name do you see I, I use s1 dot name for both getting and setting 
and it can automatically figure out what one to use depending on the context. So in the console.write line s1.name, it knows I'm trying to get the data, so it will come into here, it will run this code and do the same exact thing. So let's go ahead and test that to make sure it works. Let's start off by trying to make this empty. If we make this empty, remember what happens. It does not let you overwrite it. If you type in no name, it will not let you overwrite. So when I do console.write line s1.name, it should still print Tom. So when I run it, as you can see, it still prints Tom. But now there's no call to the function. So to the user, they don't need to know at all what's going on behind the scenes. It's not a function call. It's just a property. They just set the value like a normal variable. It's very simple. But behind the scenes, it is running code still. So a property is a way that we can make a variable type thing that can run code. And we can still attach these constraints that we need to protect our data. Now, let's also change its age back down to 15. And we should we should see this student is too young because it's still going to run that check in the get portion. So let's go ahead and run that. And we can see the student is too young. So it can still do all the code as a function because, to be honest, this property gets converted into a function call at the end. It is. This is a function. It's just the syntax. It's a little trick that we can trick the users of our program thinking that it's just a variable, but it really is a function. It's running code behind the scenes. So next, let's convert our uh, age. So get age and set age. So I'm going to say public int age. It's normal that when you create properties, your private data will be the, the name of it in lowercase, and the property will be the name of it in uppercase. So public int age, then I open my block, then I'll do my get portion. So my get portion is going to do this code right here. If the age is greater than or equal to 18, return the age, else return negative 1. And then I'm going to do the set portion, which is set. And I'll pass in this information. However, I lose that parameter, so that information, new age, does not exist anymore. So I have to change it to value, which represents the value of what's being passed in. When you, when you say s1.name equals blank, this value becomes value. So whatever, what I have selected right now, that is what becomes value when it comes into the property. So I'm, that's what I'm checking on. The value is the right-hand side of the assignment operator. So now age is taken care of. So now if I, oh, I'm not doing anything with age, actually. So anyway, so age is taken care of. Now let's do final grade. So the last one, public double final grade get. So all, we're, all in our get, we're just saying return final grade. That's it. There's no checking, but we can add checking if we wanted to. So we get final grade and then set is this code. It does all this checking. And then change all these variables to value. Okay. So we can go ahead and now test our final grade code by just saying S1 dot final grade equals 105 and then s1 dot final grade print the final grade and we can run it and you can still see it's working where it becomes 100 because 105 is greater than 100 so it goes back to that cap of 100 okay so that's how we convert a get and set function to a property however there's one more thing with properties that I want to go over called the auto implemented property Basically, the auto implemented property is a quick property because it's so common that you create a variable in a class that just does the get and set with a basic implementation like just return, return name and name equals value. Just it's a basic implementation. For example, if the implementation was for final grade, let me delete that. If it was just like this, public double final grade get return final grade set final grade equals value this is a basic implementation you're just if they get if they want the final grade you return the final grade if they want to set the final grade you set it there's no constraints in this this is almost the same thing as just making your variable up there public i mean private that's the same exact thing but because this is common a lot 
there's an, a thing called an auto implemented property, which basically does this automatically. But because it's a property, it allows you to add constraints to it or basic, really basic constraints to it really quickly if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that right now. So let me put that back in. Okay, so let me add a comment for auto implemented property. I'm going to add a new piece of data for this. I'm going to leave the other data the same, but I'm going to add a new piece of data for this auto implemented auto implemented property. Okay, for this auto implemented property, I'm going to use the last name. So, first is the syntax of the auto implemented property. It's public then the data type string, and I'm going to say uh, last name, even though I should have specified that the name is first name, but whatever, last name, and then how you make it a property is you just say get set. So it's get set just like that. So this is an auto-implemented property. It's basically, the reason why it's called auto-implemented is because notice how there is no private data behind the scenes. Notice how with our, our regular property, the, the property is just an interface, but the real data behind the scenes is actually a variable called name, which is a private piece of data. In the auto-implemented property, there is no data behind the scenes. It creates it automatically when you compile it. So when you compile the program, it's going to inject in this private piece of data automatically. It does that for you. So when you do an auto-implemented property, you don't need to put the private data. So there's no private data for this. However, you're, you may be wondering, okay, well, why do I want to do this? There's all different reasons of why you want to do this. By doing this, it allows you to easily to expand these get and sets really quickly and add the constraints if you want, or you can do really quick constraints on the fly. So let me explain this. Let me first set up the constructor so that when you make a student, you also need to pass in the last name. So I'm going to say string last name right there. And then I'll say this dot last name equals last name. So that's the first part. So right now, I need to call this also. So this needs to take in a last name. And then I'll pass last name. Okay, so everything's set up now. So now we have a last name in our system. When you create a student, you need to supply a last name. So I'm going to say Tom... Bob, whatever, who cares? Okay, Tom, Bob. So we have a student. So now every the error is gone. Everything's good. So now then the last name is set. However, because this is an auto implemented property, we have that problem again, where people have direct access to this and they can do whatever they want. So they I could do s one dot last name and I could change it to anything I wanted. Um, there's no control over it right now. However, let's say I do want to put a very quick constraint on it. Let's say I want a constraint where it's only readable from the main method. From anything else, it's only readable. You can't change the value. So I want to make it that you can't do this really quickly with an auto-implemented property. The way I can do that is I can say, okay, I want get to be anywhere, but set can only be set from the class itself. So I'm going to just make the set portion of it private. So now notice how there's no errors in here. I'm protecting it. I'm saying just the set portion is private, meaning the class itself can set it. However, outside of here, look, now you can no longer set it. So I added a very quick constraint in just one word. I protected my data. No user from the outside can now um, change and manipulate last name. They can only access last name. So I can I can do console.writeline s1.lastname. I just can't change last name. So if I let me remove that line and run it, you can see I can still see the Bob at the end. I'm still getting their last name. Now you could also make the get private if you wanted to. So if I made the get private, now this would say that it's only settable, which is kind of weird. You only can set the last name from the outside program. So now I can't actually get the value of it, but if I wanted to, I could just set the value of it which would not be good in this situation. I'm just trying to show you that you could make anything private the get or the set. So I'll make it the set private again. So that's basically it on properties. A property is just a shorthand 
for get and set functions that it's specific to C sharp. It makes it a little bit easier for the user of your class to set the data and get the data because they can treat it as a normal variable, even though behind the scenes it can still run that code to protect our data. That is the most important part of properties, that we can protect our data, but the user has a familiar way of setting and getting the data.